So what do I do first on this one? Add 11. 11, 20. And then the two steps. Six and a half. And then square. So this one is kind of weird. That's the first thing you do, but it tells you this step. It's going to be x minus 3 squared. This step tells you what you have to put here in order to make this become this. First you need to figure out what that number is, and then you backtrack to figure out what this number had to have been. So it had to have been plus 9. So I, that's the most easy mistake to make, is to forget to do it to both sides. Because you feel like, why should I? It's only that one's No, you just change one side, you better change the other side. Oh, okay, so I did minus 9. Oh, shit. Because I did plus 9 there, and then I subtracted oh. 9 the other side. You're thinking there is going to be a situation where we have to do everything on one side. So if I had uh, if I had uh, seven uh, plus two equals nine. Ah, screw it. Let me see that later. If I had seven and I add two, how do I make it stay the same? I have to also subtract two at the same time. So that's sort of like what you. If you're doing everything on one side, it's sort of like the Indiana Jones thing where you're like replacing, you know. Take something away, but then add something. So hopefully it's all this. And he didn't do the, he didn't take enough math. The boulder almost cold. Yeah. Indiana Jones. Yeah. If you haven't seen that movie, the shit. This is before computer graphics made everything shitty. Um, I <laughs> like a little old man. Too bad. And then this is equal to twenty. Cool. So then you take square root plus or minus. This is the number I said even specifically to be careful about, but just in general. So this is x minus 3, bam, equals, yeah, so it's to be plus or minus rad 4 rad 5, so x minus 3 equals plus or minus 2 rad 5, right? 20 is 4 times 5. So anytime you can reduce that radical, you must. Just like you give me the answer is 6 over 8. No. That's shit. That's 3 over 4, right? These are the same number, but this is simplified. And then, of course, last step is to... At three, I just, I, I don't know if you picked up on this, but I just force it to be there. It's just easier to write, because the plus or minus is already just sitting there to be in the middle. Bam. So how many answers did we just get? Sure. Two. Why does it make sense for the fundamental theorem of algebra? Because the degree was two. I like it. So now that we know about complex numbers, uh, in fact, maybe today, We'll get to the point where I can show you how to solve a cubic correctly. So very quickly, just to kind of tease this, if b cubed is 8, you would think doing this is enough, right? You would think that's enough, but why, why do we know better now? That's not enough. How many answers do I get? One. One. How many answers should there be? Three. Three. Yeah, so the other two answers are complex numbers. So later today we'll do that problem again and we'll get the other two answers. Okay. So what about number two, the more gross one there? What do we do first? Divide by nine. Divide by nine? I like it. I like some of you guys are looking at the clock like, are you gonna be able to do that today? I like a challenge. Now now notice how I, I love completing the square because it's easy. And it's just brute force. You almost don't have to think. You just do what it says, right? As long as you know the two steps. That is going to be kind of gross, isn't it? Yeah. Too bad, because what's the first step? Yeah. Cut three and a half. But what's beautiful is, whatever this shit's going to be, it's going to factor like this. I, I don't have to actually factor it. That's what I want to mean. I don't have to actually think about it. I just put that in. I know that's how it's going to factor. That's how it was built. The whole process was built. What's the second step? <clears throat> Square three halves, and that's what has to go here, and so that was is what has to go here. Right, add it to both sides, right? Now you worry a little bit that they're fractions, but like this much. Come on, LCD. So I get x plus three squared, x plus three half squared equals the LCD. There's going to be thirty-six. Give him a 4, give him a, a 9, so you get 20, plus 81, so you get 101 over 
36. 36 is a nice number considering what we have to do next. This happens a decent amount of time with com completing square root fractions. Square root, square root, plus or minus, plus or minus square root of 101 over 6. six. Good. Yeah. And then just subtract 3 halves, you're done. That's so beautiful, because what's the square root of 101? Uh, that's 10 points something. So you just leave it alone, it's nothing nice. Negative 3 halves, plus or minus, square root of 101 over 6. Bam. Mike is going to subtract 3 halves. So even as fractions, it will be a little bit ugly, but not as ugly as you would think. Because a lot of the stuff that would be difficult, it's built to do for you. It's crazy. All right. So um, so we're going to prove the quadratic formula, which is a shortcut most of the time to the process we just used. To be honest, sometimes the, it works quicker if you do this than quadratic formula, but, you know, who here already knows quadratic formula? Anybody? Can you, would you be able to say it? All over 2 I love it. Cool. And there's stupid things about making a little song out of it. Whatever shit. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen why that's true, but I'm about to show you. Right, so what I'm about to do is to show you where quadratic formula comes from. You don't have to be able to do what I'm about to do. Right. I was trying to see, I think in the book it's somewhere, but I have no idea. So here's what quadratic, here's why quadratic, quadratic remember, is so ugly. It's because it actually answers this equation. where I know nothing for sure, right? A, B, and C are just whatever numbers they happen to be, right? Obviously, A wouldn't be zero, or else, I mean, if A was zero, then it just, the answer would be negative C over B, whoop to do Can you guys with me, okay? Um, so what, uh, you, you can write this down or not, it's up to you. I, I'd, if I were you, I'd just sit here and watch, right? Uh, so hopefully you agree, one of the first things I have to do is divide by A, because I, I'm going to want to use completing the square. So you get x squared plus B over A x plus C over A equals 0. And I can subtract, I can make some room, because how do you factor this? Oh, oh it's funny, Jeff. All right, so let's make some room and do completing the square. There, right? Subtract C over A to both sides. Okay. And this is where people, you don't even give yourself a chance. Sometimes you're just like, there's no way in shit I would do that. Well, the process doesn't care. The process is the same. What, what's the first step now to figure out what goes here and to figure out what's going to be next? Just stick with the one that works, Jeff. Yeah, the first step is to take half of the middle. So one thing to realize is you don't have to write it as b over a over 2. Just take half of it. Right? So you get b over 2a, which should sound possibly familiar. So that's going to be what? That's going to be how it factors. Yeah, x plus b over 2a. What has to be here to make that work I'm going to take this and do what? Squared. But see, this is where the fact that this is gross, there's no numbers here, the fact that it doesn't change the process. It doesn't change what you do. You take half of it, and then you square it. I don't care what the hell it is. So this will be b squared over 4a squared. So that's what's got to be here, plus b squared over 4a squared, plus b squared over 4a squared. Right? You've got to do the both sides. And just like we did a second ago when there were fractions, I have to put these together. So what's the LCD or, or what's he missing that he's got? Yeah, he's missing a 4a. 
So let me multiply by 4a. Does this look familiar now? I mean, so I get b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. It doesn't quite sound right yet because I'm about to take the square root. That's why the bottom is 2a. Right? I mean, you guys still sort of with me? I've just done the same thing we did before. It's just that you guys are kind of automatically thrown off when there's no numbers in it, but who gives a shit? You still do the exact same process. Um, take the square root, take the square root, plus or minus x plus b over 2a equals square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a plus or minus. And you just track that over. Aren't they already LCD? So it would be negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, which is the quadratic form. So if I have any equation, any quadratic, meaning a squared, is the degree, I can say whatever number this is, whatever number this is, whatever number this is, and just plug them in the right place. So for example, um, let's look at that last one we did. What was it? Uh, 9x squared. 27x. We subtract the 5 over so it looks the same. What's A? 9. 9. What's B? 27. What's C? Negative 5. And now just throw them in, right? So it'll be uh, negative B, so it'll be negative 27. Give or take, square root of B squared. Oh shit. Oh, what's that going to be, Jeff? I don't know. Uh, times. Is it 729? 729. Yeah. Okay. 729. Is that called B squared? Minus 4 times A times C. Or you can just point there, Jeff, to see it better. All over twice A. So you get negative 27, give or take, square root. So it'll be 729 plus, plus 180. Right, and then we'll that'll be uh, 909, maybe? Sounds right, Jeff, sure, okay. Over 18. Now, come on, no, no, all right, let me stop there, you guys. I haven't done anything that crazy. You could just throw in the calculator 27 squared, right? I tried to do it in my head, think, thankfully it came out right, but I sort of knew 729, I wasn't sure if that was it. Uh, and then this is minus, minus, so plus. I mean, there's the, the computations here are not difficult, right? Now, what do you notice about this? What number is screaming at you that wants to be broken up as? What goes into 909? Nine, oh nine. nine, right? Square root of 9 is 3. So that would be negative 27 plus or minus 3, square root of 101 over 18. Because you can break this up as square root of 9, square root of 101, square root of 9 is 3, square root of 101, I don't know. And the big mistake people make is they either kill the 3 and the 18, and then they leave this guy alone. No, no, no. Everything is being divided by 18. So what, what can go into all three of these, of course? 3. So this will be negative 9 plus or minus square root of 101 over 6. Or negative 9 over 6 is negative... 3 halves plus or minus square root of 101 over 6. Is that the same answer we got earlier? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so that's quadratic formula. It What we did was we completed a square for that specific problem. We completed the square for this problem. This is completing the square for every problem first. And then you just throw the numbers in. So it's done the completing the square work already. So I would just plug it in. Okay. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. So, <laughs> if you didn't know quadratic formula, now you see where it came from. You must memorize this. All right? When I become senile later in my life, I'll just be waddling around town saying this negative B pressure line. Okay. To be completely honest, 
the quadratic formula is in section 11.4. Now, the reason I did chapter 11 out of order, you're about to see why. They tell you something in section 11.1, and they don't tell you why it's true. And I hate that shit, and you should hate that shit. You can't explain why what they tell you in 11.1 is true until you know the quadratic formula. And they just say, well, this is how it works. And I screw that. Right? I want to know why it works that way. So, so help me out. What, what, tell me something about a parabola. And, of course, all this stuff is x squared, right? Every single thing we've been doing is x squared. They're all going to be parabolas if I graph them. And just like it did on the video, if I had a parabola that was like this, where is it equal to zero? The x-intercepts, right? And, of course, if it doesn't hit the x-axis on my real graph, the answers are going to be complex. That's the connection. If it hits the x-axis, it's going to have real answers. If it don't, it's going to have complex answers. In fact, what would be true about the inside here if it was going to be complex? b squared minus 4ac would have to be negative, because that's where complex answers come from, square roots of negative numbers. Ooh, a lot going on. So now watch, now watch, watch. If I had this, uh, what you got? If you had what, Jeff? Uh, yeah. If I had this, can you find the x-intercepts for me? Yes, you can. You just don't realize it. X-intercepts are where the function output is zero, right? All right, well, set this equal to zero, what would you do? Yeah? You guys with me? Okay, okay. So you get x equals one and three? So that's where what happens? That's where the parabola crosses. Is this an op, an, an, op, an up parabola, opens up? Or does it open down? Do we even know how to tell that yet? I haven't told you yet, but do you guys know? Since this is a positive x squared, it's going to open up. If that was a negative something x squared, it would open down. That's it. It's sort of related to slope. When you get, if you take calculus, you'll see more. Because calculus is the study of slopes of things that aren't straight lines. Right. Um, well, that's the first part. Now watch this. Where must the vertex be? Where must, in fact, what this shit is the vertex, Jeff? Let's start there. The vertex is that lowest or highest point based on if it opens up or down. That's the vertex, the turning point. That's the vertex. What is true about any parabola is, um, how do I ask this without just doing the answer? It's symmetric. symmetric. Oh my God, thank God. Somebody was like, in your head. Man. <laughs> That's true, you have an easy time with tests. The answer to that. Um, symmetric. So I didn't draw this very well. It should be right in the middle of the intercepts. Are you with me? Stay with me. Stay with me. You're going to develop a shortcut. If I was a company and my profit function looked like this, I want to be there, right? So I want to have a way to find that freaking vertex. I want a shortcut because my formula is probably look disgusting as hell. So I want a way to find it very quickly. And that's where we're developing now is a quick way to find that turning point. That's almost the most important point in a parabola. Um, so the vertex, what do I know? The vertex is a point. Which part of the point do I know for sure? So where's it going to be? It's going to have to be between these two, right? Okay, okay. So I know it's going to be somewhere on this line. So I know the x part of the point, that's the vertex, has to be 2. Because that's between 1 and 3. So how do I find the y piece? Well, I just freaking plug 2 in, right? I know x is 2. So if I plug 2 in, I get 4 minus 8. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So I know that the vertex is at 2, negative 1. All right. Now, what I want you to take away from what I just said is, since it's symmetric, if I knew the intercepts, the vertex x piece has to be in between those two x's. And then how do you find the y piece? Plug that x value in. That's how you always find y. Plug it in. So how the shit do I use that, Jeff? Are you always able to find the x-intercepts easy? We are now. How did I find the x-intercepts? I took this ax squared plus bx plus c, and I set it equal to 0. 
Didn't we just develop a process that handles that, even if I can't factor it? In fact, what was the process again? This one here, right? No, 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 no. even better. Than that. Now, I'll make this even better for you, right? This creates, this will always tell you the x-intercepts. Always. That's what it does. It finds where it's equal to zero, right? So then it tells you the intercepts. So here's, you've got to stay with me now. This is, this is too good to believe. This is too freaking awesome to believe. Uh, do you notice how, let me write this in a different way. Remember how we had it like this? I could have written it like this, separated. Right? And now, now watch. Now watch. Isn't this saying I start at negative b over 2a, and I go up by this much, and I go down by this much to find my x-intercepts, right? So what's going to always be in the middle of the x-intercepts? Negative b over 2a. That's always the x piece of the vertex, always, because that's always in the middle of my intercepts. So watch, what's, uh, for this problem, what's A? One. One. What's B? Negative four. So what's negative B over two A? Negative negative four is four, divided by two times one is two, freaking two, right? So even if it, the numbers are disgusting as shit, I throw them in here, I know the X piece, how to find the Y piece, put it in. All right, so let's try a full kind of graphing a parabola problem out with this newfound knowledge of ours. Uh, what time is it? You guys saw drawing. Yesterday we were gone by now. Oh, it's too bad. All right, so let's see. Let's take one that's not quite as pretty and not factorable at all. Uh, First thing I'm going to ask you actually is interesting. What's the y intercept? Yeah. How do you always find the y intercept? You make x zero. In fact, to extend to math uh, 696, I think that's the last math course I took. Uh, how do you always find an intercept? You make all the other variables zero. Well, we only have two variables. Oh, you guys wave your hands. Oh well, we can't see you. It's like, well, you guys can just be in the darkness. So the y-intercept is going to be 0, 1. In fact, when it's in ax squared plus bx plus c form, c is the y piece of the y-intercept. It's sort of like mx plus b. Same reason. All the x shit is going to go away because you're going to make it 0. Right, that seems to be a good thing to know if I'm going to graph the damn thing. Right? Uh, now I can find the vertex. How do I find the vertex? Well, the x piece is going to be negative b over 2a, so what's b? Five. Negative 5. And what's a? One. 1. Right? So I get 5 halves. Oh, you got a fraction. So how do I find the... So now I know the vertex is 5 halves comma, don't know yet. Plug 5 halves in. So it's 5 halves squared minus 5 times 5 halves plus 1. 25 fourths minus 25 halves, which would be 50 fourths. Just to kind of ch cut to the chase. Is that cool? This would be 25 halves. LCD, 50 fourths. Plus 1 is plus 4 fourths. So I get negative 25 plus 4 is negative 21 fourths. All right, so you do have to work with fractions sometimes. So here's what's beautiful. Here's one last piece that I haven't told you yet. I've got the turning point. I've got the y-intercept. There will be one more point that I don't have to do any work for. Let's see if we can get it with this kind of funky numbers. 0, 1 is the y-intercept. That's awesome. 5 halves. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 halves. 2 and a half. Negative 21 fourths. What's negative 21 fourths, roughly? Or what is it as a mixed number? 
five one four elements. So negative one, two, three, four, five, and a fourth right there. So it's five halves, negative twenty one fourths. One, two, three, four, five. There it is. How far away is that from the y-axis? How far away is that? That's five halves away, right? And we just we said earlier that parabolas have to be symmetric. So there's like a mirror here. So there's going to be another point that's the mirror image of this one. And it's going to be the same distance, of course. When you look in the mirror, there's somebody else looking at you the same distance away from you. And they want to hurt you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Who's staring at yourself in the mirror? Flinch. Come on. All right. Uh, so what's five halves up from five halves? Half of five plus half of five is a whole five. Good. So at five, it's going to be at five, it's going to have a point right here. Yeah, you can do it, John. There you go. So then there's my parabola. I got one point with no work. I just have to make it the same, you know, the reflection point. That's awesome. That's easy. That's not too easy, but it's relatively easy. Nice little way to get that always. And then the same distance away, there's going to be another point. Reflection point. We are. We are. It's a little gross, but it won't. Yes? Um, can you tell me how much you gave 4 over 4? Oh, because that's it's 1 over 1. And everybody else has a 4. So 4 over 4, yeah. 1's nice. It'll become whatever you want it to be. So this is old stuff. This is the new stuff. And this is the really new stuff to find that last point. It's beautiful. You can always find y-intercept easy which means you must always be able to find that reflection point easy. I'm so confused on the last point. Oh, this guy? Yeah. So if it's symmetric, what does that mean, symmetry? Symmetric. Symmetry. What does it mean to have symmetry? There's got to be some line, at least one line you can draw that would fold on itself, right? And that line is going to go right through the vertex. In fact, this is called... I don't know if this book says this, but this is called the axis of symmetry. All right, not the axis of evil, but the axis of symmetry. So that is the mirror. So if there's a point at this height, this far away on this side, there's got to be another point at that height, that far away on the other side. It's got to be the mirror image point. Does that make sense? Does it make sense that this ended opening up? How did I know it opened up? Because I put a y intercept in a vertex and the reflection, of course, is going to open up to connect those three dots. Thank God it does open up because it's positive, right? Right there. If that was a negative, it should end up opening down. I like it. I like it. Okay, okay. So let's see, where does that make this end up? So... think, yes, cool, yes, that catches us up with a section 11.1, uh, section 11.2, yep, and section 11, holy shit, we did a lot today, if it felt like we did, it's because we did, we just did the first four sections of chapter 11, in the correct order, <laughs> which is not the way the book did it, um, if you look on the back of that sheet, the completing the square sheet, I've sort of summarized all the different methods we have to solve quadratic equations. So the old method of factoring, if you can. And then you got this square root principle. We have something squared, you stick a square. And then you got the completed square, which is making it look like example two, so then I can do that same idea, square root plus or minus. And then finally, the, the newest one is the quadratic formula. Right? So there's the four main ways to solve a quadratic equation by hand. Um, quadratic formula always works though, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, I just, the other ones don't. it just, because um, even if it's factorable, like the one we had earlier, which is this here, you can still use quadratic formula, it's still gonna come up with the right answers. But, please dear God, don't, right? especially for this. Try to factor first before you start throwing in quadratic. Uh, otherwise, I think that's plenty. We'll do this one next time. So tomorrow I'm going to have the practice test because then Monday is going to be a review for the test that happens Wednesday. Next Tuesday is a holiday.
Is there another quiz tomorrow? There's a quiz tomorrow. What it's 10-1, 10-2. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I look. Right. See you guys tomorrow. Keep going. Crazy. Okay. Is there any way to check my grade online? What's that? Can I check my grade online? No. Ha ha ha. No, I hate that shit. One reason I do that is to force people to come see me sometimes.